Jonathan Lee Riches investigates new statement by Washington State University regarding Brian Kohlberger. And I'm going to read this statement to you and discuss because it's interesting language in this statement. Check this out and then we will further analyze what they said. This was posted on the Washington State University Pullman website. Dear Coogs, a new year and a new semester bring an opportunity for growth, peace, and most of all, healing. The last few months have been trying. In the announcement of the rest of Brian Christopher Koberger, a former WSU PhD student, as a suspect in the deaths of four University of Idaho students has shocked our communities. First and foremost, I want to reiterate my heart felt sympathies to the families and friends of Ethan, Kaylee, Madison, and Zanna. The tremendous loss of these young lives have left us all deeply saddened. I encourage all of our faculty, staff, and students to take advantage of the support resources available to you listed at the end of this email. If you have concerns about a student's well-being, please share the information with the Student Care Network. I am hopeful that the coming days and weeks will provide us all with additional answers and information about the nature of this incident. Over the next few weeks, I anticipate that many members of our Cougar family, particularly those familiar with Mr. Kohlberger, may be contacted by law enforcement, the media, and concerned citizens. I strongly encourage everyone to cooperate with the investigated process as much as they are able. If you have any information that you believe would be relevant to the investigation, the Moscow Police Department asks that you submit to their tip line, leaves a number. And then you see here, but you notice, look, though Mr. Kohlberger is not enrolled as a student at WSU Pullman, we recognize some of you may still have questions about the safety on campus. If so, you are welcome to contact the WSU Police Non-Emergency Line. So they're saying that he's not enrolled there now. And you notice the language they used in there. Former student not enrolled there now. So according to the website, Brian Kohlberger is not enrolled. Wonder when he officially became not enrolled in the university. Notice in the statement they said former student and he's not enrolled. And I find that interesting because I believe that all universities have a due process when you kick a student out of a university, expulsion or suspension. The student, I believe, has a right to a hearing, right? And I'm not sure if Brian Kohlberger got that. They're saying he's not enrolled unless Brian Kohlberger dropped out and told them he doesn't want to be there anymore or after the arrest or before the arrest, he left the university. But they're saying that he's not there anymore. And I find that interesting because it seems like he just started enrolling there in August of 2022. So the university came out and said, he's not here. He's not with us anymore. I say this because I'm going to show you another case out of the Washington State University about another student that had legal issues and he was also kicked out. Check this out. This was reported by Pullman Radio News back in December 2nd, 2016. WSU ordered to rehear its expulsion of a Saudi national formerly accused of blank, blank, blank young girls. A former child blank, blank, and blank suspect from Saudi Arabia who apparently fled the country has been granted a new student con conduct hearing at Washington State University. The case began in the spring of 2014 when WSU uh, student in educational uh, education Abdulif Arif was arrested and charged with felony child and blank. You know those words. Authorities said the 40-year-old had sexual contact with a 15-year-old girl that he met online. The investigation began when the pair were in the same vehicle involved in a car accident. The girl allegedly admitted to detectives that she had sexual contact with Arishai. If I'm not saying his right 
name right, I'm sorry. That case was eventually dropped by Whitman County Prosecutor's Office in the summer of 2014 because there wasn't enough evidence to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. The WSU Student Con uh, Conduct Board expelled Arishai and banned him from campus over the child and allegations. Arishai appealed that decision in civil court, claiming that he was denied his right to full adjudication. WSU's decision to kick him out of school was upheld in Whitman uh, County Court, Superior Court. That ruling was reversed this week by the Washington State Court of Appeals Division in Spokane. The judicial panel sided with Arishai and ordered WSU to develop the capacity to conduct a timely full adjudication. This civil case involving an alleged uh, allegation of a child and blank is not the only time the Saudi national has been accused of criminal activity involving young girls. In a separate case, just weeks after the child counts were dropped, Arishai allegedly tried to lure a young girl in downtown Pullman. Authorities believe that he quickly fled the country back to Saudi Arabia and asked for a uh, nationwide arrest warrant for his apprehension the day they filed a felony child count against him. That all changed earlier this year when uh, Arishai's defense attorney filed a motion to dismiss, arguing insufficient evidence to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. Whitman County Superior Court Judge Dave Frazier sided with the defense during the hearing in February and dropped the case, which squashed the nationwide warrant. The appeals court ordered that WSU rehear the expulsion of the formerly accused child and luring suspect is being reviewed by campus attorneys. WSU administration is already examining its student conduct process in the wake of allegations of misconduct over the expulsion of two football players. Judge Frazier recently allowed defense lineman Robert Barber to return to the team pending the outcome of his full appeal. So the point of this is to show that WSU might have a history of just kicking people out without due process. Um, you could see here, the guy here was charged, charges were dropped, but he, you know, he's trying to get back or get a hearing from the school about his expulsion. So it looks like Washington State University has its fair share of scandals. It also talked about some football players that had some problems too. But it makes me wonder, you know, um, did they just, you know, kick them out, kick them out and then say, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll roll the dice later. We'll roll the dice later if he, if Brian is found not guilty, highly likely that, uh, unlikely that he'll be found not guilty. But it does seem interesting that they just jumped the gun and kicked them out. Or maybe there was a process, maybe something behind the scenes where the Brian Kohlberger doesn't have to be present and, you know, they just kicked them out, throw them out, said he's not with us anymore because, as far as we know, as far as I know, and maybe as far as you know, he was still enrolled in that school. He was just heading back for the holidays to his family and had plans to go back. Unless he, after the murders were done, the four college students who were murdered, he, you know, sent his resignation papers in. Well, remains to be seen, but that is a statement from Washington State University. Subscribe to my channel. Like, hit the notification button. I am covering this case no stone left unturned. Who is Brian Kohlberger? I'll be following his court proceedings, following it through. So if you want in-depth analysis and you want up-to-date information, this is the channel to come to. Everyone be safe. God bless. Justice for the victims, their family, the city of Pullman, city of Moscow, Idaho, Washington, even Pennsylvania, even Monroe County, where Brian Kohlberger was apprehended. Praying for everyone. God bless.